Now, Perseus is the son of Zeus. But let me step back and show you how that happened. In this legendary time, there was a cruel king named Acretius. And he had a daughter, beautiful daughter, named Danae. Though it's easier to just pronounce it Danae. Danae or Danae. And Acretius heard a prophecy that Danae would give birth to a son that would kill him. And so he foolishly tries to avoid the fate by cruelly taking his daughter. Now he can't kill her because then he'll bring the furies down upon himself and blood guilt. And so what he does is he locks her up in a high tower, sort of like Rapunzel. And he figures, I'll lock her up as long as she remains a virgin. She'll never have a child and I'll be safe. But one day Zeus is flying by and he sees Danae in the tower and falls in love with her. But he can't get to her. She's locked up in a tower with just a little window. So he transforms himself into a shower of gold. And the gold comes down and impregnates Danae. And she gave birth to Perseus, the son of Zeus. Well, when Acrisius learned that she had a child, he didn't know how. And again, he couldn't kill the child because the child is his grandson. He doesn't want to bring down blood guilt. So he takes his daughter and he takes his grandson, and he locks him up in what is basically a coffin and sets it adrift. Let nature take care of it. But the gods are watching over, and that coffin ship lands on the shore, and the mother and little baby are rescued by a friendly fisherman named Dictus. And he takes them in and raises Perseus as his own son. So Perseus never knows that he's actually the son of Zeus. Now, not only Perseus, but Jason, Theseus, and Hercules all fit in one of my favorite archetypes, and that's called the archetype of the foundling. Who's the foundling? You know those old stories where somebody can't take care of a baby, so they put him in a basket and leave it on a doorstep? That's where the idea of the foundling comes from. But all the foundlings of myth and legend are usually children of some kind of royal or aristocratic birth, but somehow they get lost and are raised by poor people or common people until they grow up and step into their destiny. And again, Perseus is the son of Zeus, but he's raised as the son of a humble fisherman, and it won't be till he comes of age that he will know who he is. Do you know that there's three stories in in, in at least the Western world of foundlings raised by animals? Mowgli from the Jungle Book is raised by wolves. Pecos Bill in America is raised by coyotes. And Tarzan is raised by apes. And all of them, especially Tarzan, he's actually called Greystoke because he's actually an aristocrat, right? Can you think of some other foundlings? What about Oliver Twist, who's a rich boy, but he gets lost, so to speak, raises a foundling, but at the end, and part of the myth of the foundling is called the blue-blooded foundling. He's got blue blood, and so nothing bad can happen to him. He's always good and moral, and he rises above. In our modern day, the most famous foundlings to come from a sort of a popular culture are uh, Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker, right? Both of them, the boy who lived, the son of these two great wizards, but raised with this terrible muggle family, and yet he will someday become the Messiah character who will kill Voldemort. Luke Skywalker is actually the son of Anakin, but he's raised on a farm with his uncle and aunt. Doesn't seem very... But eventually he comes to know who he is and steps into his death. And there are many more examples of this. Now, why is this so persistent? Well, I'll tell you why I believe it's all persistent, because every one of these foundling myths points forward to the greatest foundling of all, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, raised as the son of a poor carpenter until he steps into his messianic destiny. And you know what, folks? In some ways, I think all of us are foundlings. There's a wonderful story, I don't know who wrote it, but it's told of a lion cub that got separated from his family, the tribe, and was raised by goats. And it grew up thinking it was a goat. And then one day, a lion appears out of nowhere and leaps 
into the grass, and all the goats go scattering, except our little lion cub. For some reason, he's not afraid. And he looks at the lion. He's not afraid. And the lion goes, raw, and, and the little lion cub goes, bah. And he's like, ah! And, 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 and he takes him over. And the lion shows the lion cub his reflection in the water, but it still doesn't do any good. And then the lion kills some fresh meat and feeds it to his little cub. And when the cub eats it, his eyes fill up with fire and blood, and he lets out a roar. Folks, we are all sons and daughters of the king. We are all lion cubs raised by goats. And we too need to step into our destiny. It's such a persistent myth. It's everywhere because I think it's almost encoded in our DNA. And again, Jesus is the ultimate foundling.